of the most legendary cricket matches now on ESPN Classic as we bring you day four of the third test of the 1981 Ashes. It's test match history. Oh, beautiful shape. Beautiful shape. Welcome to the highlights of a wonderful day's cricket, the fourth day of this third Cornhill Test match at Headingley, a day where England started off looking as though they had to concentrate on all-out defence and where the Australian bowlers seemed as though they would be in the ascendancy. The scorecard at the start of the day was six for one England. Graham Gooch, the man out, caught on Saturday evening by Alderman off Lily without scoring. Immediately after that, the umpires went off the field, boycott Nought not out, and Brearley four not out, six for one. That's the situation at the start. England needed 221 runs to avoid an innings defeat. Dennis Lilly started off finishing his over. He had three balls to go from uh, the unfinished over on Saturday evening. Terry Alderman then bowled the first full over. Mike Brearley had made a single, and Alderman is bowling to him now in the commentary box. Tom Graveney and Christopher Martin Jenkins. Very well timed stroke. And four runs. Lily again from the Caxton Lane end. That's a good shot. Long chase back for Hughes, but it's going to be a vain one. And Mike Bradley has been very precise on anything slightly over pitch so far this morning. Yes, easy as you like. Thank you very much to Terry Alderman at third slip and the first victim of the morning for Dennis Lilly. An excellent delivery this pitched on the off stump he had to play at it and it just left him off the seam and Terry Alderman made that catch look very very easy safely away for four wide delivery this from Dennis Lilly and really if England are going to have any chance they've got to cash in on the bad ball chasing and throwing there from Trevor Chappell and a fine shot from David Gower. That was very well bowled, but my word, it did cut a long way off the seam. Alan Border safely took it there at slip. I reckon that must have pitched around about middle and leg and finished up outside off stump. Uh, David Gower has gone for nine, 37 for three now. Excellent piece of bowling from Terry Alderman. But I'm not too sure there's very much Gower could have done about that. He's gone in 37 minutes. But that's close, yes. I'm afraid he has to go, LBW again. Second time in the match, Mike Gatting, and Alderman has struck again. He removed Gower. Now he's taken Gatting, and England 41 for four. Mike Gatting felt it might have been going down the leg side. The keeper's fairly well in line with the leg stump. That's usually quite a good guide.
seven on the board now, and boycott goes to eighteen. Off the mark, but for one instant, he must have wondered where it was going. And showing that he can attack as well when the opportunity arises it won't go for four chapel catching up with it just inside the long off boundary and just no, he's coming back for the second despite a good return from Lily. and I think trying to repeat the Yorker which he produced for Willie in the first innings but Peter Willie digging that one out successfully just two runs added to take that total up to 78 for four at lunch a desperate session for England that they lost uh, the three wickets before lunch the Australians Lily and Alderman each two wickets and very very much on top and we pick up play now in the third over after lunch five runs are added it's Dennis Lilly coming in to bowl and Peter Willie's taking strike with me in the commentary box is Tom Gravely. Four runs, very fine glance. The shout came from Lily, who thought uh, the ball had got through Willie's defence. Safely away for four. Very similar to the stroke with which Willie got off the mark when he was facing Terry Alderman. Shot. That's gone like a rocket. <laughs> Great shot. but still a beautiful stroke from Peter Willey to bring up the 100 for England. 102 for four now, and Willey has gone to 31. Beautifully placed. Now that is really good thinking. A superb piece of captaincy, a magnificent piece of bowling, and Peter Willey is gone. That's one of the best pieces of tactical thinking I've seen in a long time. Very, very good piece of out cricket by Australia. There it is. Mind you, the delivery was tremendous because it climbed that little bit higher and, and got Peter Willey a little bit tucked up, and he really only chipped it rather than hit it to that short third man but very very fine performance by the Australian side then. and what a nice way for Dennis Lilly to become the greatest ever wicket taker in the history of Anglo-Australian tests goes past uh, Huey Trumbull's record of 141 yeah what a triumph for him it would be if he could still be batting at six o'clock this evening shot Alderman pitching up again inviting him to drive and Ian Botham needs no second invitation
again, beautifully timed. It was back with a square, but it's four runs nonetheless. And that's taking a long time to go down. There's a big gap there. Should be two. Dyson the field up. And although the sun may be shining, still a bit of a problem with these flying papers. And he's gone and a very reluctant lever of the crease. Alderman getting the vital breakthrough for Australia when it seemed that Boycott just simply couldn't be penetrated. And he does not look very happy with that, but that's partly, I'm sure, because he's not put a foot wrong. And really never looked like missing the ball at all. But he is out LBW for 46 after 215 minutes of superb defense. Soft dismissal, but very well bowled. The man placed there for it, and Ray Bright making no mistake, a simple catch. Lifting a bit, and Bob Taylor sometimes inclined to pop the ball up in that area. Becomes the seventh man out, and Alderman's fourth victim. Rather disappointed with himself. Bertham's 27 not out, Dilly 10 not out. Here's Alderman. <laughs> Four. It's a good shot, too. Smashed away to the left hand of cover. Stopped. It's a great piece. <laughs> well, that's bad luck. Bad luck. It was a lovely shot. A superb piece of feeling to get to it. at tea time there it was 51 runs still needed to avoid an innings defeat and even though both them and Dilly were going so well only three wickets in hand and oh, what a splendid shot very wide very well pitched up and Graham Dilly continuing his successful policy before tea Shot. And that brings up the 50 partnership. Oh, beautiful stroke. Beautiful stroke. No trouble at all, another tremendous blow through the covers. And round the wicket or over the wicket, they're coming all alike to Graham Dilly at the moment, and that now is his highest test score for England. 
39 not out. Action replay from the last over. And he brings up the 200 to a great cheer from this uh, Yorkshire crowd who are relieved to see the home team at least putting up a fight here. where he intended but it brings him his 50 nonetheless the second 50 of the match and that broad smile conveying the old sense of enjoyment <laughs> safely over the top of Hughes's head Bit of a risky blow that, but uh, he's got away with it. I think he hit this one somewhere near the splice. But he's such a powerful man, and he carried Deepish Mid on. So just eight needed now to make Australia bat again. in a row and <laughs> the last two owing a bit to luck but uh, he's really having a lovely time and so the crowd good Sunday league shot this overslip four runs all the way thoroughbred stroke. This is what we were saying a little while ago. This is a perfect shot. He stays where he is, he doesn't pull that front leg away, and he hits it right in the middle, and England go into the lead. putting a great deal of thought as you would expect into his field placings here and there is the hundred partnership between Ian Botham and Graham Dilly in just 70 minutes which of if they haven't turned the match upside down, they've certainly turned the character of the match upside down. And uh, 
I suspect it was always on the cards once Alderman decided that would uh, be his angle of attack. Complete change of angle there. It was always likely to non-plus the left-hander. But what a splendid knock that was from Graham Dilley. 56. Bold Alderman. And that gives uh, Alderman his fifth wicket. chasing it it's gone straight into the confectionery stall and out again A beautiful hit what a wonderful follow through by Ian Botham 50 in the first innings a century in the second and six wickets a marvellous all-round performance to match some of the others he's produced for England and a marvellous tribute as well from his teammates all of whom have gathered and Mike really is just giving him the word to stick around Safe and four. Unorthodox but valuable. And up comes the 300 now. And he's through. Botham's highest test score. Has any innings, Ian, ever given you more pleasure than that one? Oh, well, this is a very good one, yeah. I enjoyed this one, yeah. And uh, can you cross your heart and say that uh, the cares of captaincy taken away from you, that you've looked a lot more relaxed and it's really the old Ian Botham again? I'm not going to say... You know, see, I found myself in the original Catch-22 situation, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. Well, what about the state of the match now, Ian? Because um, a lot of the pundits are left with egg on their faces. Yeah. Well, England uh, still... facing inevitable, inevitable defeat, etc., etc. And now what? It's over 100 ahead. It's 124, the lead. One wicket to go. We get another 50 or 60. It might be interesting in the morning. But uh, let's see what happens tomorrow. Ian, I reckon you want to get in the bath and you deserve yeah. it. Tremendous. Well played. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Cheers. Cheers, cheers indeed. I reckon if you're an Englishman, an Australian, or anyone else here at uh, the Headingley Ground today, you couldn't do anything else but cheer. That was one of the most wonderful exhibitions I've ever seen in all the time I've been watching cricket. And as a commentator, that goes back now to 1960. And the playing side of it goes back 10 years before that. Absolutely exhilarating and marvellous stuff, not only for the spectators, but uh, for the England team, and certainly for the England captain, who at one stage, when he looked at uh, the scorecard, when uh, things weren't going so well, must have thought it quite out of the question that uh, those final figures you see there would be sitting in front of him at the close of play. 145 not out, Ian Botham. Bob Willis not out, one. 351 for nine, and what a change in the match situation now. Marvellous performance by Dilly and Old to stick around there with Botham. Botham held the stage all the time, and England lead now by 124 runs. A marvellous effort when you consider the situation they were in at tea time where everything looked desperate and uh, in fact it was just a question if they could hold out for the rest of the day. Ian Botham, well today he became the first England player ever to hit 100 and take five wickets in a test match against Australia. He's done it against New Zealand, Pakistan and India before and uh, so too has Tony Gregg in a match against the West Indies but no one 
until today has ever done it in a test against Australia. And the only Australian to do it in Anglo-Australian test matches was the great Jack Gregory in a test match uh, in Melbourne way back in 1921 when he scored 100 dead and took 7 for 69. It's red, it's round and it's coming your way.